Hey, welcome back to Random American. And today, I'm trying to beat the heat in the square body a little bit. So, we're gonna take some stuff, some that was free, some that wasn't, and I'm gonna try and cool the cab down a little bit. So today's gonna be a little bit of a shorter episode. Biggest thing, I'm gonna plug some holes in the cab and I'm gonna wrap the exhaust because I'll show you right here, the exhaust, or the exhaust. The cab is quite hot. So I'm gonna do my best to cool it down a little bit because the biggest thing is a little bit of airflow coming through the cab and my feet. My feet are on fire in this thing. And I think I can take some flex tape and plug all the holes because that's very important. And I'm gonna take some of this here so I'm gonna take some of this here vermiculite coated, uh, or yeah, vermiculite coated fiberglass tape. I got this from my old job there throwing it out. And I'm going to wrap my exhaust with it and we're gonna make a comparison on how hot my floorboards are before and after. So yeah, I'll go ahead and show you how hot that cab was. I mean, it was up next to the engine, it was getting up to 180 degrees. So we need to do something. All right, the biggest thing that was letting air in was this right here where my harness goes through. So I just got some flex tape, covered that up. I did, and this is something I didn't mention, get some earplugs and plug those two three-eighths. Man, man, fender is hot. Plug those two three-eighths holes from the previous brake booster. And there is a, that's over there somewhere. Next, we have those two holes up here on your cab for drain holes. I plug those from the top side because trying to plug them from down here is a losing battle. And of course, you all know about my oh, oh, where's that? You all know about my duct tape fix stuff up there. So that'll be fixed eventually. I don't. The first step will be removing my exhaust. So I got three bolts up there. And then my exhaust man put clamps on down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this off with a little bit of water, get this cooled down because I just shut this thing off. And yeah, those might be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but we'll see, I don't know. We'll get them down though, and then we'll wrap them and all the fun stuff. Well, it's the next day, because this thing's too hot to work on last night, and then buddy of mine wanted to get Chinese. And I like Chinese. I did PB Blaster these, even though they're pretty new. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Hammer. There we go. Oh, fun thing about today, I have to get this done in two hours. Got plans. So if this could, there we go, that would be awesome. There we go. I'm gonna take the unplug my O2 sensors and get the three bolts off my header flange and then fight with these to come out because those are going to be in there. He had these nice and tight. And they will go back together with anises on everything. Uh, there's a bird of 15. That's a 14. So, be back in a quick sec. <sighs> Need to move my shop floor forward anyway.
I did not give myself much room for this. Let's see if I can go get an exhaust expander. That was the easy one. Is this one? I can't. Well, now the easy part's done. We have to get a exhaust joint expander before this goes back in, so I need to be quick about this. We're gonna go ahead and put our insulation on this. I'm only gonna run it to the edge of the joint on either end. I probably won't even go around the O2 sensor. I'll just keep it on this side of it. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this. And the cool part about this stuff is it's actually sticky on the back side. That's why the white is here. It's just some wax paper that they use to put on it. Now this is going to be a bit of a pain because that is a big roll, but I'll give you an idea as to what I need to do here. So I don't know where you can get this specifically, but I will see if I can find something as close to this as possible, and I will put a screenshot of it up right here. Because if this works, then hell yeah. If it do not, then... I don't know. Nah, I'm gonna have to put that on an angle. And with this, I am going to be quite generous with it because of how hot it gets in that cab. Now, I won't use this for the floor at all because. because it will come apart real easy. And obviously this stuff is not good for you. Okay. So I have it set to where I'm doing like a 
25% overlap. So in all reality, well, maybe a one third overlap because I have some here, some here that's doubled up and then a strip in the center that's not. This stuff works really, really well. So I don't expect to have to worry too much about the spots that aren't doubled up. And this stuff will 100% make you itchy, so you need to be mindful of that. See if I can figure out a system. That other one's going to be quite difficult because it has all the bends in it. I want to make this one continuous piece because at the ends I'm going to hose clamp it on to keep it from unraveling. I don't know how well that's going to work. I might have to go get more hose clamps and just do a bunch of sections, especially on that other one. Okay, so we got this thing wrapped. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off. Try to follow the seam or one of the seams down. Now, this stuff will absolutely ruin your knife edge. So, keep that in mind. And, I know for a fact that whenever we start this thing, run it for a while, it's going to smell horrible from this sticky stuff coming off. So, you have to keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and get some hose clamps on this and we'll move on. So I'm just going to get my hose clamp and I'm going to put it down here close-ish to the end, just enough to keep it from unraveling. Okay. And that is good. But I'm not, because I'm going oh, what did I do here? Oh. Huh. Great. So I'm a moron, and I'm gonna go ahead and get the, try and get an expander tool for the other side. And I'm gonna go get two more hose clamps. Cause I bought hose clamps yesterday, but I bought two. I was like, oh, I got two pipes. I got two hose clamps. No, I need four. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. And I'm gonna get the other one all wrapped up and good and then we're I'll meet you back underneath the truck and get this put back together. Okay, so here's what we're doing next. I got an exhaust expander tool from the Advanced and just gonna put it right in there. And we're gonna turn this until we hopefully expand it a little bit. Okay. You can probably use an impact on this, but I don't really need to. I shouldn't have to go that far. I don't know how much that has done. So I'm going to get the pipe in here, and we're going to find out. Probably not much, but I don't know. Well, I mean, it seems like it did something. Yeah. I'm gonna grease this too. It looks like it's been run pretty hard without it. So, I'll get the pipe, I'll get some grease. And yes, that's a rental tool. I'm greasing it. Leave me alone. Which way did I take it out? Maybe this way? I don't know if that's what it's going in. That hurt. Uh, I'll give it a little bit more.
Now I'm going to get some anisees. Anisees that up. Sounds good. In case you're curious, this is nickel anisees. And it is the most high temp stuff I could find. Okay, I'll get the flange up front, bolt it in, and then I'll clamp this because, you know, I want to be able to, oh man, I expanded that, now it doesn't want to go. But because I want to be able to turn that up there as needed. Do I need to get the hammer? I'll get the hammer, I swear to God. Okay, one side is done. Now let's get the other one in. I'll expand this first. You might see how this does with the impact. That works way better whenever you're not trying to expand a, a weld joint. Note to self, pay more attention. Oh yeah, that's way better. <laughs> Damn it, I put my indices all the way up the front. <laughs> Beautiful. There we go. Well. The results are in, and I would have to say that it definitely helps. So as you can see, I'm going to put it up right here, that it's still hotter than hell, okay? It wasn't just a magic fix that all of a sudden it's cool in the cab. What I will say is I noticed that, especially blocking the holes in the firewall and the floorboard, there's not nearly as much hot air moving past. The bottoms of my feet will still cook but they're not quite as hot as they were before. And even though it's a little bit cooler today, whenever I took that video, it's still, the exhaust is gonna make the floor temperature what it's gonna be. Unless it's in like the 30s or 20s or whatever outside, you're not gonna notice a whole lot of difference as far as ambient air temperature versus floor temperature from the exhaust. So I can say that further out is a little bit cooler next to the transmission is still hot because the transmission is going to be hot but as far as is it worth it i think so but i didn't realize how much noise actually came from the cat or from the pipes themselves through the cab and i didn't actually realize how much the wrap would tame that down a bit it does make the back of the truck sound a lot better because i can hear it a lot cleaner it will you, gotta, you have to know this, it will make the pipes themselves run hotter because it's keeping the heat trapped. But I'm pretty sure that there is something about 
the extra heat in your pipes helping the flow through your engine. So diesel guys used to use headers a lot in competition. And they switch back to a, a cast manifold that help, holds heat better and they're starting to wrap their exhaust to hold heat more to help shove it through to pull more air through the engine. So increases flow. I don't care what people say, back pressure is a bad thing. Flow is flow, horsepower is horsepower and don't ever forget it. But we're gonna have to wrap it up there. Next, I have a couple of smaller projects I need to do. The I finally have the parts for the rear end to change it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that because, man, it needs it so bad. I do have a couple issues with this thing. Yesterday, I was... Yesterday, I was having an issue. This thing acted like it was running on four cylinders and just running richer than hell. But I ended up unplugging my O2 sensors and then plugging them back in and ran smoothly. So I might have a problem with the old O2s not reading right and forcing this thing to run super rich. So I need to take a look at that. I might have a ground that's screwed up somewhere. So I'm going to dig into that more before I give a definite answer and actually spend money. Because I don't like spending money. But that's going to be it for today. I really appreciate you guys and... I really appreciate having my projects move forward because of you, so thank you very much. But I will see you next time, and you guys have a good one.